Let's give him some load. Today I'm going to strip the cab off the Zetros. The first thing I did was to take the bonnet off. Now, you have two options there. The one is to undo these four screws here that holds the hinges for the bonnet or you can undo two screws from the bottom that will leave the bracket, part of the bracket on the chassis. I decided to take all four of these screws out and remove it completely. The next is to remove the cab. Now, the lack of a manual makes things complicated, but I think that by undoing that one bracket, the one screw onto the chassis is going to be the shortest route. Okay, I have undone those two uh, screws from the chassis and now it appears that the cab is held down by two screws at the back and they're quite difficult to get hold of. It looks like I'll have to remove the spare wheel to get closer to those screws. Yes, by removing the spare wheel, you can get to that screw at the bottom that holds the back of the cap. Okay, it was only those four screws and you have the whole cap off. I must say, the build quality on this truck, although it is technically unbelievable, the build quality is extremely poor. Look at that screw there. It's not fastened properly. When I undid the screws from the chassis, the one was fast and the other one was only halfway in. So, my advice, if you buy a truck like this, take your time and dismantle it and put it back together again. There's a hell of a lot of screws that are not properly in. Another reason why I have to strip the truck is that I've got a problem when I'm engaging the top gear. That shift doesn't go in solidly and sometimes the truck will jump out of gear while driving and other times you just can't get it to engage in the top gear. Now this is a complicated fiasco if I may call it that. Here on the servo, there's one servo, and that servo must lock the three different axles, the diff locks, and at the same time, it also controls the gear shift from low gear to top gear. I don't know why they did that. It's a six channel radio that they give you with it. Why didn't they split this? At least Put the diff locks on one servo and the gear shaft on another servo. But let's see. Now this is my problem. This truck has now been engaged into top gear. In other words, all the diffs were unlocked. But there it is. You can hear the motor is spinning, but nothing else. Right, so this is where the problem is. 
when you put it into top gear, that cable is not going all out to pull the pin right out. It is now in top gear. And look how far that pin can still go. You can hear the thing is spinning. There is the problem. Look at that. It doesn't engage fully. And that is a problem. And you need to fix it. My common sense tells me I have to undo this screw here and shorten the cable. But due to the lack of a manual or any instructions i'm a little bit scared of undoing that because i might as well screw the damn thing but i have to do something this cannot work now if you look here on the server that is the cable that is supposed to engage your top gear And it's just obviously it's clear that it's not pulling tough or hard enough. There's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of slack here that has to be taken out. So I have to make a plan with that. Okay, I've done the modification. And if you look carefully there on the gear yeah, transfer box. There's a little black dot there. There it is. That is where the pin went originally. And if you now look, you can see where that pin is now. So now that gear, box, that gear has been properly engaged. Oh. Went from there to there. That is approximately three millimeters. That is top gear. And that is low gear. Back to top gear. Immediately. Okay. So I'm comfortable. This has now been fixed. And this is how I fixed it. At the top here next to the servo, you can see here's a gear shift cable. And it had a crimp on from the factory. But it didn't give enough tension. There's also a spring in there that when you engage the gear, that spring is sitting there and the moment that the gearbox spins, it engages fully. So the spring keeps some tension on the cable. All I did is I took a, a banana connector, I clipped off a piece right at the back and I crimped that onto the cable. I will now clean that up and finish it because this was just temporary to see if it works. But that has solved the problem for me. All right. I've cleaned that little spacer off that I put in there. And uh, that was done. It would have been great if we had some documentation about the trucks. The next issue for me now would be to go through this old chassis and check all the fasteners. I've already found a problem here on the first day. Look at the back there, there's some uh, stainless steel screws that I've put in there to replace it, holding these mud flaps. Both the screws that hold some mud flap brackets down to the chassis. To this side, to that side. They were all four of them were stripped. So I've replaced the screws. 
with the stainless steel screws and I have uh, put nuts on the back. Let's see what the future brings. I will keep documenting as I find more issues. <laughs>